the 2021 Honda CRF 300L and we are the first UK motorcycle channel to review this bike and in this video we're going to give you a full and thorough review. You may know that I'm not really a big fan of adventure bikes because they're way too heavy off-road and um, people buy them for the wrong reasons. They often buy them just to sort of commute to work and go green laning at the weekend and they're not doing any particular mileage. Um, adventure bikes are great if you're going to travel across the Sahara or the Serengeti or something and do some long unmade roads which are fairly flat and uh, speedy and uh, with the big engines they're good for long distances but off-road for sort of tight stuff and green lanes and things they're way too heavy and if you ever watch any videos on YouTube the first thing they teach you on adventure bike training schools is how to pick the thing up because you'll spend more time picking it up than riding it but this off-road in green lanes is absolutely fantastic because it's so light and it's so nimble you can direct it exactly where you want to go and um, this is the number one choice in my mind if you want to have a bike to commute with and do a bit of off-roading at the weekend it's totally perfect now this crf 300 l costs four thousand nine hundred ninety nine pounds in the uk and there's also another version called the Rally, which basically has just Dakar Rally styling and a bigger fuel tank, and that's £6,039. Now, it's nice to see there's a few owner reviews of this bike out there. Um, it was very late coming to the press, unfortunately, because of uh, Covid and because of um, Brexit in England. Um, so we finally got our hands on one and we're really grateful to Honda for being the first to do that. Um, but lots of people have commented how soft the suspension is. And as you can see with my huge weight, it has compressed the back a lot. Um, but in saying that, riding, it's so plush, it really does ride nicely, both on-road and off-road. And we did some byways on it, and uh, I found it to be absolutely perfectly comfortable, and it took the bump so nicely uh, up and down through ditches and what have you. It was very good. I probably would need to uh, adjust the preload because it's on the softer setting, so you can stiffen it up a bit more. And there are springs that you can get to, to stiffen it up even more. So if you were doing jumps and stuff, um, then you probably, yes, you do need stiffer suspension. The front it's not too bad it's more the back um, but if you're just riding green lanes and normal trails I'd say it's perfectly right as it is now this bike is very maneuverable so if you want to avoid obstacles and you know, not, not go in the puddles you know you can absolutely just steer it where you like look it's fantastic um, oh, the suspension is spot on actually I've ever ridden a trial bike, they're very soft. And that is good. You know, that gives you some maneuverability. Well, look at this one. I can just dart in and out anywhere I want to go. Perfect, really. We've been very kindly sent this motorcycle handlebar phone mount um, by Shape Heart and it's absolutely brilliant. It's simple to put on, you literally just clip it on with a magnet and um, it slides in, inside this little case which is waterproof as well and it is touch proof so you can use your phone while it's in the case um, and then when you stop somewhere you can just slide your phone out of the case, leave the um, case on the bike and then you just slip it back in. Um, we've been using this as a sat nav um, for the last sort of week or so and it is really really good um, so if you go in the description below check them out um, and use our code mdatum which is the um, initials to our channel name um, and you'll get a good discount on it too The engine that's in this Honda produces 26.9 horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 26.6 newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM. On paper, you may not think the horsepower and torque uh, sounds very much, but believe me, off-road, it's all you need. And when you're riding down the sort of trails and byways, it's plenty. You don't need more than that. If you do have more than that, and you've got one of these big 700s um, or even bigger than that, 
it's way too much, which is why you have to have all these modes to numb it down and you've got all the weight. With this, you've got no weight at all. So if uh, off-roading at the weekend is one of your priorities, this is just perfectly made for that. The front wheel on this bike is 21 inches and the rear is 18 and that's optimal for enduro bikes. And the tires on this bike that come as standard, the IRC Trails tires, these are really, really good all round tires. They're great off road in the mud, good in the grass, which is good because sometimes tires are very slippery in the grass and they don't make too much humming um, when you're going along on the road, which is sometimes a characteristic of knobbly tires on tarmac. Um, so they are really good all round tires. I ride a lot of big motorcycles, Harley Davidsons, Indians, all sorts, with massive torquey engines. And I often comment that it's like riding a rhinoceros. And when I got onto this and had a little ride around, I felt it's like, um, a butterfly, and I mean that in the nicest sense of the word, more in the sort of Muhammad Ali sense of float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and this just goes exactly where you want it. So light and so nimble and so easy. Uh, it's a very good bike to place, and you'll see when we were riding off road, you can put it exactly where you want and avoid obstacles and go over what you want, and it's brilliant. This bike is ever so good off road on the trails. Um, the suspension is really, really good for just going over obstacles. I mean, I tell you, it's just so soft that it's like a trails bike. It really is very good indeed, actually. And a lot of people have been saying, oh, you need to stiffen up the suspension, but you don't. It's uh, absolutely perfect, just the way it is. Now, let me turn around here. Now, if we're going up and down, uh, banks, obstacles, ditches, things like that. Oh, absolutely spot on. Um, the only problem is with these motocross boots, I can't get my foot under the gear lever, so I'd have to lift the uh, gear lever up a little bit if it was my own personal bike. Um, but look, as you go over these uh, ruts in the road, it just goes straight over them. It's ever so good. Um, so yeah, I can't fault this bike, it really is very, very good indeed. We've got six gears on this and there's a little indicator on the dash here that tells you what gear you're in. Um, and they change fine, no problems at all with normal shoes or normal boots. But um, with my motocross boots, I found that uh, the thickness of the boot made it really hard to get my foot underneath. So the only way I could change gear, if you see there, that's the angle your boot needs to be. So the only way I could actually change gear with my motocross boots was to slide all the way forwards so my feet were dangling down like that. So if I was sitting here, I couldn't actually upshift at all. If that is a problem for you, it's an easy fix. Uh, you can just adjust the um, gear shift lever and just um, have it positioned up a little higher, or you can get extended end bits uh, from various uh, aftermarket manufacturers. So it's not a problem. You've got a rake of 27.5 degrees, a trail of 109 millimeters, and a wheelbase of 1,455 millimeters. There's a 7.8 litre fuel tank on this bike, and the official figures say you get 32.3 kilometers per litre. Um, we've got it on miles per gallon on this, and we've been getting um, 84.6 miles per gallon, which is very impressive, um, considering we haven't been riding it very um, gingerly. Um, so that is really, really impressive. This falls in the same sort of ballpark price-wise as the Royal Enfield Himalayan, which is a, a very popular bike, made popular by uh, this lady who's riding it across uh, the world, uh, Itchy Knee or itch, something like that, something itchy. Um, but uh, this is £300 more expensive, but 10 times better, I kid you not. It weighs 142 kilograms, which for a road going enduro sort of um, dual purpose motorcycle, that is really, really quite light. Um, if you compare it to some of the other models, um, the CRF 450RX, which is sort of a racy bike, um, 
that's 116 kilograms, which is obviously going to be a bit lighter because it's a racing bike. Um, if you compare it to the Yamaha Tenere, that's 204 kilograms, and the Honda Africa Twin is 226 kilograms. So that gives you a little rough idea where this bike sits and how light it is. Now, this has got proper enduro motorcycle styling uh, and practicality. You've got a proper front mudguard which comes to the rear as well. Now, a lot of bikes like, say, the Royal Enfield Himalayan have a little sort of um, wheel hugger mudguard there because there's not enough space here to get the um, mudguard in there. So um, this is a proper bike and you need these high mud guards so when you're getting all muddy and what have you, uh, it's the best way to keep the mud off the bike and uh, not get clogged up in the wheel. Another thing I hate about adventure bikes is this horrible scooped out seat you get. You normally sit like that and you can't go back because it goes up behind you. This has got a proper seat where you can actually manoeuvre yourself backwards and forwards, no problem at all. So for body positioning, off-road riding, uh, it's absolutely spot on. The seat height is 880 millimetres. Um, I'm six foot one, so you can judge by me how you'd look on this bike. Um, as you see, when I've just got on this bike, the suspension is quite soft as it goes down very easily. Um, you can stiffen it up with the preload um, or you can get stiffer springs. Um, but to be honest, that's up to you. We haven't touched it at all, so this is just as it comes. Um, but on the road, it does soak up the bumps very, very nicely. Um, but it's whether you'd want it to be a little stiffer for other circumstances. Um, so it really is personal preference on that one. When I was watching some of the owner reviews of this, a lot of people are complaining about this uh, being in the way, but I actually find I can see the dash perfectly well, um, no matter where I'm sitting. So for me, uh, obviously you see it move as the suspension compresses, it's gotta, it's gotta be there. There are ways of sort of moving out of the way, but to be honest with you, it's not a problem. There's an assist slipper clutch on here as well, which um, stops or helps prevent wheel hop when you're um, shifting down a gear. If you shift down too early, sometimes you get a um, little juddering when you're slowing down. Um, so this should help alleviate that problem. If you want a bike for commuting, this is perfect as well because what makes it so good off-road and it's so nimble also makes it a great city bike because you can get in and out of traffic, lane filtering and what have you and it's very manoeuvrable and it's very light so it's a perfect commuter and it's the perfect all-rounder. A lot of people have been asking about the service intervals um, for the 300L and it is a big factor. Um, obviously the racing enduro bikes you have to service them all the time um, but your first service is at 600 miles and then after that it's every 8,000 miles or once every year um, whichever comes first. Um, so that's not bad at all. I mean if you're doing sort of daily riding to and from work say you're doing 10 to 15 miles a day which I actually did on my enduro bike when I had it um, you will get about 8,000 miles a year so that's pretty bang on for average use. For my height and width I could see about half the road behind in the mirrors which is uh, more than some bikes I must say. Uh, not too bad. If they were a little wider then that would be better for visibility um, but the, the bars and the mirrors are sort of about the right sort of compromise width for lane splitting and town riding and for off-road riding as well so uh, if they were any wider you'd have problems in the cities when you're going in and out of traffic. The Honda is nice and simple, there's no modes to worry about, or don't like modes. Uh, you've got a cable throttle, a cable clutch, nice and simple, good feel, works very well. And um, it's simplicity, easy to maintain, easy to look after, and um, uh, no headache. 
Somebody did ask, uh, can you wheelie this bike? And you certainly can, it's not a, a problem. It hasn't got the sort of snappy power of a motocross or enduro bike, so you're not gonna be able to snap the throttle open and lift the front wheel up. You've got to sort of prep it and uh, compress the front and then go for it. But yes, you can wheelie this bike. The turning circle lock to lock on this is really good. So if you're maneuvering in tight spaces, uh, it's very easy. When I first saw pictures of this motorcycle online, um, I wasn't sure about it, but when you see it in the flesh, it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, the thing that made me think about um, when I saw the pictures is that I thought this would be too sort of bulbous compared to the um, racing bikes, but it really isn't. Um, it really is a very, very good looking bike. There is a bit of a trend at the moment for these sort of weird looking pointy bikes that look like uh, Big Bird from Sesame Street. Uh, you know what I mean. A lot of adventure bikes, bikes look that way. And this has got that sort of traditional um, motocross come enduro styling, which has been um, going for a long time. This looks like a sort of uh, slightly retro um, enduro trail bike. And um, I like the sort of scooped up seat and the tank, uh, sort of reminiscent of 1980s motocross bikes. So styling wise, it's a beauty. This is one of our most popular t-shirts that I'm wearing. Um, if you go on our website, you can see in the carousel below and there's more on the website. Um, there's plenty of designs, make sure you check them out. And if you like them, please purchase one. It really helps us out and it helps us eat dinner. Um, otherwise, we're, we're just eating grass every night. Looking at the build quality and the reliability and how well it's made and the parts and what have you, it's faultless. It's a Honda. You can't go wrong with a Honda. You really can't. So if you were looking at some of the other brands, don't buy the Honda. If you were thinking about this Honda as your first motorcycle, then I would say 100% yes, because it does everything, everything really well. It's got uh, enough power to get yourself moving, but not too much to get yourself into trouble. Um, if you're doing, say, 60 miles per hour on the motorway in sixth gear, it's doing about 5,800 RPM or so. And at 70 miles per hour, it's doing 6,800 or so. Um, you can get it up to about 85, maybe a tad more at a push if you lie prone like that, which is what I used to do on my 50cc and I used to get one mile an hour more out of it if I did that, so that's worth doing. So uh, you can get a bit more speed, um, but it's enough. 70 miles an hour is plenty on a bike like this. It's not about speed, it's about enjoyment and this gives you a grin from mile to mile. Just around this corner there's a uh, nasty bump that you really do feel on most motorbikes. Let's give it a test on this. Notice it. That's nice corner well as well. Obviously a higher capacity adventure bike like the Honda Africa Twin would be a better bet if you're doing lots of long journeys uh, because you don't rev so much at, at the sort of legal motorway speeds, whereas this will be revving a little bit higher. Um, but I would be happy to say once a year, uh, put a backpack on and a strap a tent to the back and drive 300 miles to go camping on Exmoor or uh, the Lake District or something. Perfectly happy, but I wouldn't want to do it every week. Um, so for distance riding, um, I would say I'd be happy to do 50 miles a day on it. Um, but it's not really a long distance bike for lots of the time. It's more of a everyday bike with a once or twice a year longer rides. The Honda's got tons of ground clearance. It really has. I mean, it will go over any obstacle you like. And as you can see, I'm underneath it and there's still plenty of room spare. Another thing we always mean to do, but always forget to do in our reviews is to, to show you the hooter. So on this one, uh, it's loud enough, um, quite high pitched, but people hear it and get out of your way because it's not a particularly loud bike. You don't have a loud exhaust on this. And of course you could change the end can here to get a little bit more of a um, sort of roar to the bike. So if you wanted to do that, then uh, that's another option. If you're 
main purpose is 50% road, 50% off-road, then I would say go for the 300L. If you're perhaps a little more road biased and you want to do slightly longer journeys, that bigger tank and what have you, uh, make the rally version probably the better choice. Now, very usefully, you've got these little sort of peg things here, uh, which are for attaching accessories and uh, racks and things. Uh, but as they are, they're actually quite useful for sort of tying bungees round. So uh, I was riding around today with my camera bag strapped to the rear here, and with bungees and what have you, you can put a few bits of luggage on there. So that's quite useful to have. You've got this little uh, cubby box on the side here, which opens with the key and it flips open and inside is the typical Honda toolkit. Um, but there's enough space in there to put your house keys, uh, maybe a mobile phone, a sandwich and what have you. So you could put a few little things in there. And next to it is again, a helmet lock, uh, which you put the key in and you can put your helmet on there, lock it up and uh, go off um, and do something without your helmet being stolen. Now I was riding around today um, the indicators are very good, they're nice and bright, but they're not self-cancelling, and that's something that you don't find on many bikes. Um, but it's quite useful to have them, so you do have to remember to press the um, button in to cancel them, because um, I was coming up to uh, a road, and there was a chap sort of waiting to turn out, and I forgot the indicator was actually flashing left. Um, so he could have very easily pulled out on me. So you do have to be aware of that because a lot of motorcycle accidents, of course, when someone comes out of a junction and smashes into you. So um, often that could be because your indicator is going and you don't know about it. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you liked the video or even if you didn't, um, because otherwise we'll uh, come and chase you. Um, it really helps the algorithm on YouTube and it helps us reach new people. And the more subscribers we get, the more we reinvest in the videos. So the better quality you'll be seeing, although we're pretty good quality already, I think. I think this bike looks the business. Tell us what you think of the bike because we absolutely love it. It really is a superb motorcycle and I haven't been paid by Honda to say that. I could have said it's rubbish, but it isn't, it's brilliant. Leave your comments below what you think of this bike. Um, I think it's one of the best sort of road going enduro bikes on the market. So let me know if you agree with me and if you don't, what would you go for instead of this?